Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss about 64-bit floating point representation of number in IEEE 754 standard. Uh, we have discussed about number uh, data type in our previous two sessions and uh, in those sessions I have mentioned about this representation few times. So uh, we are going to deep dive uh, and uh, we'll see how JavaScript internally converts a number to a 64-bit floating point uh, representation in IEEE 754 standard. So uh, let's uh, get it started. Uh, we have already talked about uh, this uh, representation uh, briefly, uh, so I'll again go through that. So in the 64-bit binary representation, uh, the 64 bits are divided into three parts. The first part is sign part, which uh, takes only one bit. So uh, either it can be zero or it can be one. So zero is for positive numbers and one is for negative numbers. The next part is uh, here, uh, this is the exponent part. For exponent, we need 11 bits. And uh, the third part is the fraction. This is also called mantissa or significant. So uh, this part is the largest part. Most of the chunk is uh, uh, occupied by mantissa and it requires 52 bits. So we will go through an example and we'll calculate the fraction or mantissa and exponent uh, from that number and then we will combine them and uh, we will finally represent that number in the 64-bit uh, binary representation of IEEE 754 standard. So uh, let's uh, start with our example. So here I have taken a number 12.34 and uh, I have mentioned uh, the steps that we are going to follow to convert this number to 64-bit uh, uh, binary representation. So I have taken this uh, floating point number so that we can make things uh, more clear. Uh, so let's uh, start. So the first step is to convert integer part of the binary. So we'll take the integer part uh, from this uh, number and we'll convert it to binary. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, so 12 will become double one double zero in binary. And uh, then we will convert the fraction part to binary. So then we'll have to pick uh, point three four and uh, we'll have to convert it to binary. So uh, I hope everyone is aware about how to convert fraction or integer into binary. And if you don't know, you can go uh, and search it on Google. There will be plenty of links available uh, which you can go through and it's uh, pretty easy. Uh, you will understand. So that uh, for now, we are not going to cover that and uh, we will uh, as our sole purpose of this video is to uh, understand the 64 bit binary representation. So let's move to our third part. So now we have converted uh, binary representation of the integer part and the fraction part. Now we are going to combine these uh, two uh, uh, values. So uh, we are going to combine double one double zero and then point and then uh, the binary representation of point three four. Okay. Now we have to focus on the position of this point. So we'll have to count the number of digits uh, this uh, point has in its left. So currently uh, it has four digits in, it, in its left. Uh, so in our fourth step, what we are going to do uh, is to move this uh, point to the left so that only one non-zero digit remains to the left of the point. So uh, how many places will have to move it uh, so that only one digit remains? So we'll have to move it one, two, and three places. So after moving it uh, to three places to its left, uh, the number will become one point and the rest of the digits will remain same. And now, uh, since we have moved this uh, point position to left to three digits, then we'll also have to multiply it by two to the power three. So, uh, so while calculating the mantissa, we'll have to uh, ignore this uh, part for now. We'll be uh, using this part to calculate the exponent. So this is not required for the mantissa. So uh, we'll remove this part and uh, we will get the value for the mantissa. So this is not the exact value for the mantissa. Uh, there are a couple of things that we'll have to do. 
to get the normalized mantissa we'll have to remove get rid of this point and this uh, digit one okay so we are going to talk about this digit in my previous uh, session in my previous uh, video i discussed about uh, one extra hidden bit in the mantissa which is not used by the 64 bit representation which is which is not included in the 64 bit representation but whenever we uh, try to calculate the value from mantissa we always use that extra bit so uh, since we already use that extra bit in the mantissa while calculating so we don't have to uh, keep it here so we can get rid of this extra bit and the point so we uh, get this uh, value and uh, since uh, only 52 bits can be used for mantissa we can remove the extra bits from the right so this uh, representation this uh, string of one and zeros contain 56 bits so we can uh, remove the last four digits from the right position so uh, this is the final mantissa that we will get uh, which will contain 52 bits so this is the mechanism to calculate the mantissa i hope you have understood okay uh, so now let's talk about the exponent but before we uh, proceed we also need to understand that uh, why this is called as biased exponent you might have seen it being referred as a biased exponent so uh, let's go back to the previous slide uh, where we discussed that 11 bits are required to represent the exponent value so these 11 bits are required to represent the biased exponent value not the unbiased JavaScript uses the biased exponent value internally and then converts it to uh, unbiased form and then calculates the number. So uh, before storing, we also have to convert this uh, unbiased exponent, which is the three. This is unbiased because we have not added any number in this uh, exponent value. So, so uh, let's see how we can convert uh, this unbiased exponent to the biased exponents. Let's also go through the definition of the biased exponent. So biased exponent is the result of adding some constant, also called bias, to the exponent chosen to make the range of the exponent non-negative. So I will explain why biased exponents are needed and what is the benefit of using them. So for now, we will understand the process of converting unbiased exponent to the biased exponent. The formula to calculate the constant or the bias that will be added in the unbiased exponent will be 2 to the power n minus 1 by 2. So if n bits are required, but in our case, we require 11 bits to represent the biased component. So it will be 2 to the power 11 minus 1 divided by 2 and uh, the result that we will be get is 1023. So whenever we are going to convert our unbiased exponent to the biased exponent, then we will have to add 1023. This value will have to be added and then it will become the uh, biased exponent. So here 3 is unbiased, the uh, 3 value that we got. Uh, is unbiased and uh, we will add 1023 then it will become 1026 now we will convert 1026 to the binary form and then we will get the biased exponent value and this is the value that will be stored in those 11 bits okay so now let's understand why this biased exponent is uh, required we know that the exponent value can be both positive and can be negative but if we are going to store a, an extra sign bit to represent the sign of the exponent then the calculation will be more complex and it will be hard uh, so to avoid that scenario to avoid that complexity it was decided that the exponent value will be stored in the biased form and this biased component a value will decide whether the exponent value is positive or negative so any value which is greater than 1023 will be positive and any value which is less than 1023 will be negative in the unbiased form i hope you have understood what is biased exponent and how to calculate and why it is required okay so uh, let's move to our next slide so we have calculated mantissa, we have calculated exponent and we know the sign digit. Since the number is positive, it will be zero. Now we can combine all these three parts into one and then we will get our final 64-bit representation of the number. So 
here will go the sine digit and then the exponent and then this is the mantissa which is 52 digit i have included that one extra bit that uh, we uh, were talking about earlier so let me reiterate again this is not a part of the 64 bit representation i have just added it for the clarity purpose and this digit is only going to be used when we are going to convert our 64 bit representation to decimal number and if you are given the task of converting 64 bit representation back to the number that then we can also do that it's uh, pretty simple so we will get to know whether the number is positive or negative uh, with the first digit so if it is one it's a negative if it's a zero then it's a positive and uh, then we will take out the next 11 digits and uh, will convert it to the decimal and the value that we will get will be the biased form so we'll have to subtract 1023 from that value and then we will get the uh, actual unbiased exponent value and then uh, rest of the digits will be used to calculate the mantissa so uh, once we get the value of the exponent then we will decide the position of the point so in this case the exponent value will be three so we will decide the position of the point so it will be one two three and here it will be and we will know the integer part and we will also get to know the decimal part to calculate the integer part we are uh, always going to add that extra one and then we'll calculate the integer part so double one double zero will become 12 and uh, then this value uh, will become 0.34 so we will get our number 12.34 and uh, here I have added a couple of points that we don't include point in the final number. The position of point is calculated by exponent. So in this representation, we don't include the point because uh, the position of the point is decided by the exponent itself. There is always a hidden extra bit, always one in the mantissa part, which is not the part of the 64 bit representation. But when we calculate the value of mantissa, we always use this value. So we have already talked about this okay uh, so i think uh, we have uh, covered uh, pretty much everything about 64 bit representation if you have anything uh, if you have any questions please do let me know and uh, i will be happy to answer your questions so thank you for listening we'll see you in the next session have a great day